Welcome back, everybody. I'm Sean LaFlock. I'm here with Scott Hagen. This is the Fitness, Wellness, and Longevity Podcast. Scott, how goes it, brother? Hey, going pretty good. Very cool. Back after the holidays and back at it. Awesome, man. Um, so the holiday season went fairly well for you, but um, as I understand, we were talking about last time, you kind of fell ill for a few days. What happened to you? Yeah, well, some sort of food poisoning is the best I can figure uh, because it came on quite suddenly and no one else in the family got it okay um so yeah it was a uh, weekend before christmas uh, work it was my weekend to work i came in sunday morning i coached the 9 a.m class that was all good ran a few christmas errands on the way home I was really oddly hungry this was the only thing that was a little weird was extremely hungry um but i got home made my son and i you know, lunch, we ate lunch. I was still a little hungry. I ate some leftover sweet potatoes I had mashed up. Started going about chores for the day. And my stomach started cramping. And, you know, I was like, oh, I'll lay down. These usually pass. Uh-huh. When I was younger, I used to, if I ate too fast or got too hungry, I would get kind of deep stomach cramps. Yep. But I learned at some point, if I just laid down prone for like 10 minutes, they would go away and I'd be fine. Okay. But that's what this was. Um, but it just didn't go away. I kept getting up, trying to do some more chores, but it just got kind of worse. And Eventually, my wife came home, laid on the couch, played a board game with, with her son, and I was just getting more miserable. I went in, laid down, what I thought was just going to be for a little bit, and like two in the afternoon, I was never able to get up. So I started feeling fevers coming on. You know, I could definitely Ooh. feel fever coming on, and it was I wasn't nauseous, and I didn't feel like I, you know, was going to get the shits or anything like that. I just had deep, painful cramps in my, in my stomach, and um, so... It got worse and worse, canceled the evening plans I had. Mm-hmm. By 6 p.m., 5.30, 6 p.m., um, my body collectively, my muscles were much tighter than normal, and my joints were hurting much more than normal. And mm-hmm. um, I had tweaked my meniscus in my knee uh, uh, maybe two months ago. I think yep. riding my bike, I didn't, and I think we talked about it in an older podcast, but I didn't notice it until the next day, but then it was definitely an issue. But I've been rehabbing it, working on it. It's been mostly fine. I've been able to do most anything. It was all good, but I f- could feel it starting to really pull and like it didn't feel good. And just ro- and rolling over in bed, trying to get comfortable for my stomach cramp with my knee bent no more than maybe 20 degrees, no weird position. I felt it snag and catch. And then I had to kind of release it. Then it went pop. And then this was actually the sharpest pain I've ever felt during this whole thing. Um, Way more than the initial injury. And then it was inflamed and hurt like every position. So basically I laid awake all night. Um, So I was in bed probably 15 hours, uh, stomach cramps, and then knee pain. (laughs) And I couldn't, I never fell asleep the whole uh, night yeah, yeah. and it was kind of, you know, fever and all that. And it was, you know, the point where it was, it was bad enough that at times I was like, wondering if I should wake my wife up and maybe we should go to like the doctor. Yeah. You know? It was like bordering. Like if I had gotten much worse, I would probably have pulled the trigger on that. Yep. Uh, finally by morning, the stomach cramps started to ease up. So I think I slept a couple hours between seven and nine light oh. sleep. But uh, then it was, you know, got a little better. Knee hurt. I was limping around big time. I was like, oh, geez, no riding, no, no working out, all, uh, all uh, backwards, you know. I um, was able to have sort of a little bit of a Christmas Eve dinner by that time. The next day, I felt definitely better. I didn't do a lot. Mm-hmm. And then, that was, so Christmas was Tuesday, Wednesday. Then I was back to my normal schedule. I felt mostly fine outside. My knee had already gotten surprisingly better for how bad it was. Wow, okay. Wednesday morning, I come in to teach a 6 a.m. class like I do. I thought I felt you know, mostly fine was just doing some warm-up i do all the time with the class my shoulder kind of locked the one that i have trouble with every once in a while uh-huh. and then it was all grindy and snappy and became really irritated um the next morning you know the class was all like oh yeah you look like you got your color back you look better today and i was like really was i bad yesterday and it's like the three or four people were all like nodding yeah you look pretty pale yep so at some point so even though i thought i was better i was still clearly you know Things were tight. Things were inflamed. Yeah. And my joint, you know, and I, and it took a week to kind of get over the shoulder tweak from just doing a simple warm up drill I do all the time. Uh-huh. Um, now we're out, you know, at least a week and a half. My knee actually seems completely like I don't, I'm not getting any issues with it. I did squats and split squats and various things today. Yep. So it seems to have recovered. But anyway, the long story there, just kind of like the amount of, 
uh, stress, a certain amount of sickness can put your body under that normally things that would be a complete non-issue. So now imagine, you know, had I trained to say on that Wednesday, Mm -hmm. maybe I did tweak my shoulder just warming up, right? I got through that, but now I'm doing whatever it is I'm trying to do. Um, it probably wouldn't have ended well. So it's probably a blessing I heard it warming up because I might have tried to train (laughs) at least a little bit. I ended up taking the entire week off outside of a very small bike ride, a walk in a rainstorm and a small amount of mobility work one day. Mm -hmm. So uh, how are you feeling now, Scotty? I feel great. Other than that this week, easing back into my workouts, I got a little bit sore, but um, not to be expected, but uh, yeah, fully fine. No, no issues. All right, so it seems like you had quite the, uh, you know, like bout of, of food poisoning or, or some kind of, uh, uh, you know, gut upset from something, yeah. could have been potentially something very benign, uh, maybe just a, a food contamination or something like that, or maybe, you know, something as simple as, you know, washing your hands or something like that. But Yeah, um, who knows? I mean, my son ate the same thing I did outside I know, of those leftover right? sweet potatoes, you know, so I have to blame them maybe, but who knows? Yeah, you're right. So – um, after this ordeal, Scott, I mean, there's something that, uh, comes to mind for me and, and in terms of something that might help others is, um, what is your approach to when you are sick in terms of your training, nutrition and overall recovery habits? Yeah. Um, like when do you, past, hold, them I would have just, you hold them? I would have just gone for it. Right. And that's, yeah, not, not so good. I, I, you know, try to keep moving as much as possible. And one thing that this week did point out for me is that I definitely don't feel awesome if I don't do some level of exercise. Like I felt my joints were a little more creaky and I still did my joint mobility routine every single morning. Mm -hmm. Um, So it wasn't like I completely inactive, but yeah, I wouldn't do anything that has any level of intensity or high tension if if I'm truly sick. Now I, you know, it's a, talked about many times I do lots of metrics you know I uh, I've taken my heart rate variability for I think almost six years continuously mm-hmm. I probably missed five to ten days in a six-year period wow and uh, I will say that I the morning I got up to take it and it was the by far the most whack HRV I've ever seen in that amount of time <laughs> like my stand, my resting heart rate was at a hundred. Oh just as shit! A, so, <laughs> just so give you clearly, an idea of, uh, what it is right now for me. Uh, let me see here. I have my little Fitbit on. It's usually fairly accurate when it comes to um, sitting around, uh, but it was at forty-seven before. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, my se- seated heart rate will typically be in the very low fifties to upper forties, and yeah. if I'm lying, it can go as low as the low forties, depending. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, lets you know how. <laughs> so even if you don't know anything about HRV values, just that alone. Yep. But yeah, I had almost zero, uh, like a four four point um, which I guess if you are more familiar with the uh, uh, kind of the converted BioForce and isolate mm-hmm. ones, that would be well, that'd be a twenty on oh, HRV. Geez. You know, when you would normally be in the eighties or nineties, maybe yep. as an athlete. <laughs> Ooh, baby um so, so yeah go ahead scott yeah so um clearly my system would never have adapted any sort of training so when i see you people mm-hmm. you know, usually you don't have to have those metrics you you kind of you yeah. have a good idea and i i always err on the side of caution now you know live to fight another day and push when you can now, nutritionally um yeah exactly that that especially when you're dealing with a stomach virus how do you reintroduce yeah. things what do you do during it i mean do you force food down do you try to hydrate like what's your thoughts there scott um i i always like to to try to get as much fuel in as i can but with mm. that said there's times it's just not a good great idea i was at the state there was no idea i didn't basically eat anything um for a 24 hour period in there yep. um and then it was very minimal and very cautious, you know, mm-hmm. harder to digest. Things did not sound too appealing. So I, it's where I would go for things that could be a tad more uh, easy to digest, potentially a little bit of juice. Uh, I like, you know, going with some salt to reduce stress hormones, if possible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, broths. Yep. Uh, thankfully, I have some homemade 
bone broths and things like that I was able to make use of, which was nice. Um, so uh, that's what we we make a batch frequently and then uh, freeze some. Yep. And so having some, some on hand. hand, it's easy to easy uh, thing, especially if you think it might be an issue. So, um, Let me ask else? you this, Scott. One other thing that came to mind was um, prior to uh, falling ill, were there any fluctuations in your HRV scores leading up to that? The only thing I saw was I had an unusually high HRV that morning that I got sick later. Mm. Um, and I usually what you see is a low before you get sick. Yes. So it was unusually high. Now, it could have been from the week of training. It was sort of a semi-overload week. Mm -hmm. And I also, the weather was nice. I got in a couple of long riding sessions as well. Mm -hmm. I just wrote it off to that. But then you know, after seeing what happened, I was like, huh, I've never seen that. And I haven't done, I've been meaning to like poke around and see if anybody else has reported anything like that. But I, mm -hmm. you know, high parasympathetic before getting sick. Yeah, usually not what you'd see, but you're not ruling out as a possibility. Exactly. And I think what I'm alluding to also is the fact that even though some people might be coming across uh, some viruses or bacteria that might cause some, you know, gastroenteritis and some, uh, um, some gut issues like temporary, you know, acute, um, the body has to be in, in a state in which those things can affect it. So, you know, we're coming in contact with bacteria and viruses all the time. And that's why we produce stomach acid. That's why we have, you know, bacteria along our gut lining, et cetera. Um, but you know, if we're in one of those, uh, fatigued or stressed states, it makes it a lot easier for us to become, um, you know, fall ill in those acute situations. So that's why I asked, but it seems like this might be just a, a, a blip on the radar and, you know, all of a sudden two days later, you're fine and you're getting back to basic health all over again. Whereas some people have it chronically and they're like, I can't, you know, I'm always <laughs> getting in, people that are always food poisoning me. It's like, no, it's. You know, if you're not sleeping, you're chronically you're inflamed, right. like you're just susceptible to more illness. Yep. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, we come in contact with these things all the time. And, you know, it could have been a bit that it was a high, a little higher training load. And then uh, I think we all experience a little more stress at the holidays, even if there yeah. isn't like anything bad happening. Right. There's a lot of extra stuff on your plate and almost yep. no one can take off any chores to allow space to buy presents, decorate, prepare. Uh -huh. And, you know, I didn't have a lot going on, but, you know, there was definitely some. And so maybe that uh, between the two of those things was enough to um, make my body allocate resources elsewhere than the immune system and something mm -hmm. that would normally not have affected me. Maybe that's why my son didn't get saved. He might have been exposed to the same thing. But, you know, he's excited. And he's five. He's excited for Christmas. He's yeah. not stressed out at all. Right? Yeah. <laughs> His immune system fought it off. Yeah, maybe. Um, and, and here's another thing is like, you know, um, consciously we might be, you know, okay, we're good. We're not stressed, but like maybe on an unconscious level, there's some kind of, um, you know, uh, not attachment, but habitual, like being stressed during that time of the year. So all of a sudden you take in that it's the holiday season, but your immune system your nervous system takes in, uh oh, this is a fight or flight time for us. So maybe it's just habitually kind of overloaded during those times of year. It's a good point. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, like we're used to as, getting, as you know, that I work, <laughs> I work for the, the post office for nearly 20 years yeah. before, you know, quitting to run the gym over a decade ago. Yeah. And it was a gnarly season. Oh, I can't and, imagine. And, uh, I, I really got to where I kind of despised the whole Christmas season mm. just for how, overworked we got and then of course you know i still had christmas responsibilities outside of work and yep and i will say like the worst time of all the years of trying to you know run the gym was in the early years come early couple of years when i did still have a job and it was christmas time yep and i'm running the gym oh, yeah. and interest in crossfit was growing and i couldn't handle it i had and i was a one-man show so i had no one to farm it off to mm -hmm. that was that was brutal so yeah maybe Maybe you're right. Maybe even though I, that's long gone in the past, my body just goes into yeah. Those artifacts are in the back of your mind that your nervous system go, oh no, it's this time of the year again. You know? Could be. Totally.
So uh, that's very interesting. And, and I think it's probably a, a pretty cool topic for people to kind of appreciate because this kind of is that time of the year, cold and flu, people are putting on weight, yada, yada, yada. You know, there's just so many stressors involved that it's cool to understand like what we do as people who are doing this for a living, how we stave those things off, how we, uh, you know, when we are getting uh, falling under, under weather, how do we actually treat that and, and what we do. And I think we, you and I both, I think are now in the point of our careers where we, we're very cautious and very um, conservative when it comes to being sick. We don't push through training too much. We basically move as much as we feel comfortable and just to keep the body moving, keep the lymph going. And then from yeah. there, do as much as we can uh, both eating and rest wise, that's going to maximize our body's ability to fight off this kind of stuff. Yeah. I think approaching it exactly. You give your body the reserves it needs to fight it off rather than trying to, you know, take the resources elsewhere and make it try to fight it off with limited resources. You know, you'll be back to full capacity, you know, within much less time. Like I'm pretty sure I, you know, was what, four days and I was pretty much felt normal. Yep. And, and not to mention that after that little bit of time off, you, 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 you could potentially set yourself up for better gains in the long term because you did take that little bit of a deload, let the nervous system um, kind of recover, let the body recover. Um, it seems like that little knee thing that you were doing, you know, it, yeah. you just gave yourself time. Interesting. Yeah. Now just in the last few days, it actually feels better because it had been training better, better, better up until that. And then big setback, but now I already feel like it's better than it was prior. Like it's, you know, <laughs> really come enough? around. So, yeah. Um, so maybe all the rest and whatnot uh, was helpful on that regard too. Yeah. It's, it's always funny how that works, how, um, you know, l- life doesn't happen to us. It happens for us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you can't really see the entire picture of things when you're in the middle of it, but know that like, on the other side of it, you're going to understand why this stuff happened, especially if you're in the headspace of I'm looking for what the message really is so that I can kind of uh, understand and uh, internalize the fact that, again, life is working for us, not against us or not to mm-hmm. us. Right. So um, something else that was coming up for me, Scott, is um, – I actually uh, downloaded or purchased and downloaded uh, Pierre's Elite Performance, um, their uh, warm up slash training manual. Mm-hmm. So uh, the guy's name, Pierre. Uh, Pierre, let me see his last name real quick. I don't, I want to mess this up. But um, he, he was a uh, collegiate football player and then. Uh, was a, uh, I believe he played in the Canadian Football League. Uh, and then he started doing training of athletes um, for years and years. Uh, I think probably like the last, I want to say close to a decade. Um, very, It seems like he's a very high level athlete himself. Uh, Shea mm-hmm. Pierre is his name. Um, very high af- uh, level athlete himself and uh, started doing like, you know, training programs and all sorts of different exercises and fitness methodologies and that kind of stuff. And I've been following his stuff for like the last six months to a year. And all of the stuff that he does is very high quality, um, really good explosive strength stuff, um, good eccentric training. The agility stuff that they're doing is is fantastic. Great core stability work, like uh, falling in line with a lot of the things that we believe in, but kind of making a little bit more sports specific and uh, energy system specific as in like explosive power type stuff. Mm-hmm. So I purchased his um, content. Um, you know, it was, it was like a Christmas bundle deal, and I got um, like his bands that go around your knees. They're like Velcro. That actually, it's like a strap that attaches to your leg. You may have seen this before. I'll tag oh, you in yeah. it. Bit of activator and then the cord tubing goes around yeah. and hooks. They're very high quality. I mean, it's not just like your typical like um, glute bands. These things are legit and you can like do all sorts of agility and stuff and they don't move and it's not pulling your leg hair out. It's super, super high quality. Uh, two varying resistance is, um, I, I have it at the gym, but it's awesome. So it came with that. It came with like a extensive warm up where you get like, uh, just a, a general, like, like calisthenic warm up, and then uh, dynamic mobility and then more like specific mobilities. That's a section that you can just like pick and choose what you want based upon your skill level and who you're coaching. And then finally, they're going to be coming out with training uh, modules um, 
Uh, the first one that, that they sent is was a, a uh, like a phase one eccentric loading, mm -hmm. and um, it's using the French method. Okay, French um, contrast. If uh -huh. you've ever kind of seen that before, Scott. Yep. Yeah, heavy, heavy, slow, then kind of moderate, explosive, and then unloaded, explosive, and then the band assisted. Yes, like exactly. So like over speed type or over yep. jump training and. Yep. Um, I, I, you know, I'd never seen it before. I had heard about it before, but I had never done it myself or worked with athletes in it. So it's great to get another tool under the belt, so to speak. Um, yeah. but very cool stuff. And obviously the eccentric training, you know, we've, we've talked about before, but, uh, layering in the explosive work on top of it, I really, really like it. And now I can kind of integrate my own exercises that I like to use for specific, um, you know, like core stability exercises and making them more dynamic or my, uh, you know, the, the slower training, eccentric training, things like, you know, safety bar squats or even Zerker squats and things like that, that can be progressed nicely into it. And you can use that kind of French method in your own way. Uh, but I like just how they lay it out. It's just really, really clean. And then they have like, after that, they have like, you know, it's, it's the, the entirety of it is like a three day a week training for, for athletes, mm -hmm. usually the training sessions are between an hour and a half and two hours. So it's, you know, a good warm up and then like a block A, block B, block C, and each of those blocks is three to four exercises. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a, you know, it's a legit training. Like if, if you're doing three days a week, like that's enough. Like you really don't need to do five days a week for this. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it kind of fits into the mold of like off season or, or preseason football or like sport specific stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it's... Um, yeah, it's, I think it's it's fairly valuable. And then it comes with also access to their online community on Facebook. So you can ask questions, you can make connections, and, and that's valuable in itself. Uh, post content, get other people's content, and be able to exchange ideas. And I'm already exchanging ideas with people and, and being able to collaborate with other people. And I think that's worth its, worth its weight in gold right there. So um, that's pretty it's cool. really, yeah. really cool. I will just check that. That's actually, I have not, that's uh, one resource I haven't come across. So yeah, I'll be... Different than a lot of the stuff I've seen before. I feel yeah. influences of Justin Thibodeau and our uh, Christian Thibodeau and even uh -huh. Charles Polquin because he's, they're Canadian. So oh, yeah. uh, I definitely have like, you know, the, the legacy kind of uh, lives on, but uh, I, I definitely see that. But just cool little ways of doing frontal plane work and um, you, just like nice. little simple things of like how to use – uh, basic exercises and, and throwing a whole twist into it. Um, I really appreciate it. It's just layering in variety on some of the things that we've seen so many times before um, or layering variety in terms of like the, the way that we structure exercises together. So I, I really, really like it. And I'm, uh, I'm you know, I've, I've tried it a little bit with my high school kids and I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to getting into it after I get done with this competition that I'm going to be doing in a couple of weeks and then get into that and see if I can make some good, um, you know, uh, speed strength and, uh, you know, s explosiveness gains, things like, uh, you know, a, a two foot broad jump and, and a vertical leap and that kind of stuff. So I'm looking forward to yeah. getting into that as well. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. It's, I've been really enjoying doing a lot of work in different planes, frontal plane and transverse plane strength work kind of in the last couple of months, which is really it feels generally pretty good on the body and I feel, you know, I like keeping me out of some of the old patterns I used to be in and, you know, yep. connecting the dots. Uh, yeah. Some of the movement capacities. Yep. I mean, I even, even doing the stuff that, uh, you know, some of the exercises in like the C1, C2, D1, D2 that, uh, uh, Zach couples kind of describes like the chops and stuff like that, where I never would do them before. Now that I'm starting to do those, I definitely feel like I'm freeing myself up in those transverse and, and, and frontal planes. Whereas before, yeah. everything was so sagittal based that yeah. you're never really experiencing it. And I'll tell you right now, I was like, you know, feeling some hip turn on things like hitting a tennis ball or hitting a golf ball, uh, not getting those lingering like lower back pains, like swinging a, a club and, and throwing a ball and that kind of stuff. So it definitely um, – pertains and, and, and allows me to access things that in my coaching for, for sports in general, that's something that I've never really had all that much, uh, interest in just because I guess personally, I'm just like not an explosive person. So I'm like, ah, whatever. It's more about stability. It's more about, you know, movement capacity. 
but this allows me to layer all my stuff in with how do I actually then prescribe plyometric training, explosive training, mixing in weights and explosive training. So it's a really cool um, dovetail of all the things that I've kind of put aside, but now I'm starting to kind of explore myself. Yeah, nice. Nice. Yeah, I agreed about those movements and the C and D stuff in the Zach couples work, those chops. And it helped point out to me how, oh, yeah, your scapulas don't know what to do in some of these movements. I, yeah. you know, I, was, I was making the movement happen. Then I started to really focus on the you know individual pieces. And then once I sorted it out, I was like, oh, this, now this feels smooth. Yes. You know, it, yes. It really comes to make me believe that just the excessive focus on sagittal plane movements probably is what brought on all my elbow issues on the bike, actually. Yeah. Because it didn't start till I had been lifting for a number of years, um, you know, like yes. many years in on the bike without any issues. And I just chalked it up to eventual age, but yep. uh, at the time, but I actually think it was probably more a product of what was going on in the gym yep. after a while. Yeah. Um, I mentioned before that I'm going to be doing a competition next Sunday and, yeah. uh, my training right now is three days a week of the Zach couple stuff. So I do like a, a heavy trap bar deadlift, I ha you know, I'm doing floor presses, still doing floor presses, not having been doing the bench press just yet, still figuring out that, you know, scapulothoracic stuff and making sure that my, you know, chest walls are opened up. So I'm continuing to work on that. And then the third like big exercises, uh, I've progressed to the Zerker squats in, in the, the phase two of training. And, um, I, yesterday I had my best Zerker squat session yet. Um, just built to like, I think one, a five, four sets of a set of six, but you know, trying to get good form and good tempo. Um, but that thing is so hard. Those are like ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Your abs, they are like I almost tore my abs yesterday. <laughs> This is it's gnarly. I like I've outside of just demoing or maybe playing around with them barely. Yeah. I've never I've never done or trained them. So this was uh was new for me too. Absolutely. And then uh just putting like a, a bar pad on your forearms, it just it makes it all the more comfortable, you know what I mean? Okay, is that what you did? Yeah, I yep. so far just gone with the empty bar, but Yeah, that just rips I your forearms a little. It hurts, yeah. Well, yeah, and I'm not. I used uh, 115 is the most I've used, yep. just because I'm favoring that knee still. Though it's yeah. felt great this week. Oh, good. Okay, um, cool. Yeah, I just like so. it as 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 like a uh, way of of lowering the weight a little bit further down, so you kind of have a little less of a a counterbalance. So it's a nice intermediary between, let's say, a front squat and like a goblet squat. Yeah, um, it does make a nice. And it just it just area. makes you really have to brace your abs because you really can't sit back at all because there's no way of you sitting back without letting the bar pull forward. Yes, you got to pull that sucker in and just allow the knees to push forward, allow your hips to come underneath you, and then you just drive up through your heels as best as you can. So uh, that felt great today. Um, I'm doing that three times a week. I have two run sessions that I've been doing a week because I just it's just so simple for me to get up and run. So I've been doing mm -hmm. a um, steady state run, you know, a, um, you know, a Z1 type type run um, once a week. That'll be like Mondays. I'll do, I've been progressing from, I think, 20 minutes down that, like 45 minutes at a steady clip of like a, you know, nine to 10 minute mile pace, nothing crazy. And then I'll do running intervals that I've progressed from uh, minute on, minute off for 10 sets. And then he, two days ago, I did uh, three minutes on three minutes easy at a one mile pace. So mm -hmm. I'm going to progress that and I'm looking to do a yeah. nice, um, maybe like a nice peaking race sometime in the spring and just see what that'll look like. Maybe like a Spartan or something like that, that we might do with our class, you know, we'll That's see nice. yeah. with, our, uh -huh. with our gym. Uh, just because I've, I've always been fairly good at running, but never really put the time specifically into doing that. And it's just easy. <sighs> Like it's, it's a skill that I have that really makes it so there's no excuses. I enjoy running. I like being out of the house. I'm in an area where it's like, yo, you can be outside all the time. Why are you sitting inside yeah, on a rower a or a bike? Yeah, you got a area to do it. That's so true. Totally. I'm doing yeah. that twice a week. Take advantage of that beautiful exactly. weather setting. Yeah. I'm laying off Olympic lifting right now unless it's like specifically in one of the class workouts because I jump into a workout like twice a week with the class. So like the, the Metcon. Um, so like a, for instance, the, like the partner workouts or something like that, I'll, I'll do it with a partner and be able to mm. be with the class and with the gym, but then also kind of get some baseline conditioning in as well with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, I'm doing a competition next Sunday. My body feels super. Um, you know, my sh upper body and shoulders have never felt better. Like I was thinking the other day, I'm like, yo, I was at a point where I was like, I don't think I'll be ever be able to lift again. But I'm at a point yeah, now where I'm like, I love being able to like hang from a bar and then like pain free and then like do a handstand pain free and, and all those other things that I was like, yo, man, I, I might have to give this shit up. Yeah. that's awesome. So yeah, just taking the time and, and, and really putting forth the effort and, and the, the, in combination with the pretty damn good programming that Zach has put forward. But um, yeah, man, I'm looking for bigger and better things going forward, uh, even after this competition. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working my off season program as well. And I haven't uh, got the complete specifics of it, but when I have my vacation here coming up, I will uh, figure that out exactly. But yeah, man. And maybe we can go over what you want to do in the off season. Yeah. Well, the one interesting thing I'm going to do in this, so I've been doing this some off season work, but I'm going to, because I won't have access to a gym for several weeks uh, and kind of losing last week, some training this week, kind of a bridge week. I'm going to make a bunch of little routines focusing on the mobility and stability of areas that I need to work on. That'll be primarily body weight. So I can, it'll be right. kind of the thing that I intend to do six days a week. Like, so frequency, small amounts, like yep. I do it anywhere, you know, 10 minutes, get it done several times a day, maybe even, and awesome. uh, kind of go with that for a few weeks. I'd instead love of to base. hear stuff about that, man. That's really I'll let cool. you know kind of how I lay that out. And That'd be great. Also, yeah. we can check in how it goes over a couple of weeks. Cool. So we got some things to kind of uh, down the pipeline in the new year of, of uh, some new content. That's awesome. You got anything else for today, Scotty? Oh, I think that'll do it for today. Perfect. Right. Go stuff down some food. Yeah, man. I'm glad you are uh, you have the appetite to do so. But before we go, guys, just remember, this is the uh, fitness, and long fitness, Wellness, and Longevity podcast. Please subscribe. Give us a review, five stars only, please, uh, and share it with your friends. We want to grow this podcast because we feel that this is valuable information that a lot of people would benefit from. And when you guys put it out, we know that we're going to grow this community. Scotty, how can we reach you? I am Scott at CrossFitPortland.com. My am Sean at CrossFitDurryBeach.com. Scotty, I'll talk to you next week, buddy. Talk to you next week. Later, dude. Later.